And a breaking update for you out of Vendalia. The city said the recreation center, the Castle Hills Golf Course, as well as the swimming pool, and the Senior Citizen Center are going to be closed tomorrow. While well, the city did not directly connect this into that quadruple shooting we've been covering in Butler Township earlier today, it said it was doing this as a precaution. It added there were no known targeted threats for any facility, but people living in Vandalia will see an increased police presence. And it's been more than three years since the Memorial Day tornadoes, and these unlivable condos sat untouched after the tornadoes that night, still filled with people's belongings who used to live here in Harrison Township. Today, as you can see, demolition crews started wiping out what the tornado could not. We had uh, some issues with vagrancy and, and people who were trying to live in them, which then again it made it a significant safety hazard for them as well. The township said it got delayed with demo because it had to track down the property's owners. The demolition costs more than $40,000 and some taxpayer money is going to have to pay for the work. The township said the owners did not have insurance and do not think they will get any money from those owners. And we put Sky 7 in the air to show you some of today's damage and clearing. We reported earlier this year the township reached out to Five Rivers Metro Parks hoping to bring new life to this land. The Metro Parks are partnering with Clean Ohio Green Space Conservation to restore it to its natural state. The township hopes to wrap up this project sometime next year. And now, your Storm Center 7 forecast with meteorologist Kirstie Santini. Kirstie, glad to have you in tonight. Uh, I tried to check on her right before the newscast. She's long asleep, not only because she works our morning shows. Yeah. Um, so glad to have you up late. Thank you. Um, glad, to, glad to see that you're, you're still awake with us. Talk about <laughs> lightning. Very interesting what, what yes. you picked up on Doppler 7 yeah. uh, about lightning several miles from, from where this big storm cloud was. Exactly. Yeah, so this was during our 90 minutes of news earlier in the afternoon that I was tracking some storms in the northern Miami Valley. And I just want to show you here, looking at uh, live Doppler 7, this is a loop back. So this was about 5 to 6 o'clock. And if you look at that thunderstorm cell near Kenton, you can see that just off there, there is a couple lightning bolts that got picked up. So we actually had a few lightning strikes that were, I measured it, about seven miles away from where the actual parent thunderstorm was. So where it was raining and where you could hear the thunder there, you still had a lightning strike that was miles away. So it would have been sunny, basically, in the city where we had that strike. And I just want to point that out because this time of year we could see that kind of thing happen. And lightning, I think, sometimes maybe gets uh, overlooked as how dangerous that it can be. Especially if it's not raining over you, you might think, oh, I'm fine. But we hear about heat lightning in the summertime. And really, that's not actually lightning caused from heat. It's just a storm. You are too far away to hear the thunder from, but you're still able to see the lightning. Now, lightning can strike anywhere from 10 to 12 miles away from where that thunderstorm is. So it may be raining, and 10 to 12 miles away, you can get an isolated lightning strike or two. That means if you do hear thunder, you're definitely close enough to get struck by lightning, and that's why you always hear us say thunder, roar, go indoor. Very easy to remember that. And of course, when it comes to lightning safety, you don't want to be the tallest object, so you don't want to be standing in a parking lot and you're the tallest thing around during a thunderstorm, but also just be careful about being on hills and being really just in the highest elevation somewhere. Unfortunately, even golf courses, we've heard about that, that people have gotten stuck out in storms. If you're on a hill, you'd be the tallest object. Finally, if you are out at a baseball field, going in the dugout is not going to be safe enough. You want to get inside of a fully enclosed building or your car. And it's actually a metal that is around your car that helps to absorb that lightning. And then, of course, it can go out through the rubber of the wheels that are on the ground. So a car is a safe bet for you if you are outside. Let's take a look live outside, actually, for you tonight. You can see live in Xenia. A little bit of a breeze going, but it is warm out there. 77 degrees right now. Uh, looking across the Miami Valley, the coolest is up towards Sydney, 72. But I think the reason why it feels so uncomfortable for you tonight, these are our dew point temperatures. And we have actually had a very muggy summer. The National Weather Service office in uh, Wilmington actually pulled some data down from Cincinnati, which we're not too far away, and it did find that we haven't ha we have had an unusually muggy summer, and that's because those dew points have been up higher than they typically are for us. And even tonight, they're up above 70, and that's where they're going to stay through the entire weekend. We talk about dew point because it is the measure of how much moisture is in the air. So anytime the dew point goes over 65, you can feel the stickiness. You will definitely notice it is very humid through the weekend. 
still muggy as we start next week, and then you'll get a nice drop by the time we head into the middle of next week. Right now, we don't have much. There's just an isolated downpour near Connersville, Indiana. Overnight tonight, we're going to drop down to 71. Tomorrow morning, our sunrise, nice and early for you here. And it is going to be muggy and warm with maybe a little spotty fog when you wake up tomorrow morning. But going through your Saturday, 4 o'clock, we'll likely have a few storms. 8 o'clock, we might have an isolated thunderstorm or two. And then a similar story on Sunday. Muggy and mild in the morning, a hot afternoon with a few of those storms bubbling up. Our UV index is going to stay high through the weekend, so even with the chance for rain, you're still going to get quite a bit of sunshine. Future cast shows us as we head into tomorrow morning, maybe a few showers in the south. Better chance for a couple storms to bubble up in the late afternoon. We still have that chance into the evening as well. And then heading into Sunday, very similar. We'll wake up, maybe a stray shower in the morning, some sunshine in the afternoon, and then a few of these storms will bubble up as we warm up into the heat of the day. So just keep that in mind. Any thunderstorm we do get over the weekend could produce some street flooding, poor visibility with the very heavy rainfall, and of course, lightning. And looking ahead to the seven-day forecast here, we'll see an increased chance for showers and storms as we head on into our Tuesday and Monday with a cold front that comes through and then a nice break from the heat Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. I'd like to see that. Thank you much. And next week we are going to be week three of our seven weeks of summer tour. Tuesday, Storm Center 7, Chief Meteorologist McCall Fry Dag. She's going to put on her walking shoes and she's going to make her way to her band. Or she's not going to walk that whole way, but she's going to be walking the Champaign County Fair, checking out everything that's cool there. Again, that's next week. As kids head back to school, their backpacks will have school supplies. The doctor said overloading those bags can cause some problems for our kiddos.